but I'll tell you, you know, if you have a vision and have a dream, you just keep pushing at it and, and keep going and, and you'll get there. This episode is brought to you by Portfolio Box, an online portfolio made by creatives for creatives. What I've learned is to, to, to always keep going. Always. You know, I've come to find out is that, you know, no matter what happens, the storm eventually ends. And when the storm does end, you want to make sure that you're ready. Welcome back to another episode of the Hardwood Rod Podcast. Today on the show, we are talking westerns with director and actor Jason Ryan as we're going to touch base on his latest project, The Four Horsemen. What went into the project, his directing process, and his next feature length film. That and much more. Stay locked in. All right, guys, so we're back here on another episode, and today I have the pleasure and I am joined today by filmmaker Jason Ryan. Welcome to the podcast, Jason. Thanks for having me. Thank you for stopping by, and uh, it's funny how we kind of started this this episode. You know, we, you know, you were nominated, well, we were both nominated uh, for the Paris Film Festival, and your film, uh, I was lucky enough to, to, you know, just to get a little sneak peek of it, but uh, we met through that, through that film festival, and, you know, now I want to just kind of dive in a little bit on, you know, the process of directing this, this film, because it looked like it was a big production, and... Talk about your the film itself. You know some of the the struggles or any any advice for other filmmakers that are trying to shoot a western or anything of that sort. So you know we'll, we'll talk about that. But let's let's get to know you a little bit and tell us a little bit about yourself, Jason. Okay, so um, I, I was I'm actually older than most people realize. So I'm almost fifty years old. Oh and, wow! Um, <laughs> I did uh, I did twenty one years in the Air Force and then I retired. Um, now I've been working uh, for a defense contractor, but um, in 2007, I was offered to uh, be an actor in a film in California. It was a fantasy film, and it was independent. It never got produced, but I saw how the behind the scenes, like, okay, I think I could do this someday. So then you kind of put it on the back burner, and I didn't really mess with it too much. And then my daughter went to Auburn for uh, media studies, and we did a lot of her projects, and I kind of saw how she directed and, and was learning with the different equipment and everything, but I helped her do her, um, film school movies. Okay. And I've, I've been, I ride horses and, uh, I'm also, I call myself professional jouster. I do get paid to joust on the weekends for Renaissance fairs. I nice. uh, also a <laughs> cowboy and I do civil war reenacting. So, um, I got the idea to start writing a script and, um, I, I'm still working on my full length script, but the four horsemen was kind of like my test run. I wanted to go out there and do a short film that would give me some experience directing. Uh, and I had never always thought of myself more as an actor, but as you get, get into things, you're like, well, if I really want to do a project, you have to kind of wear many hats. So I kind of ended up in the director role to see my whole view and, and, something that that was close to me that I had written I wanted to bring it to life and the only way to really do that myself is not only write it but also direct it so my vision can come to life wow that's uh that's amazing Jason now like I wouldn't have expected that you you were 50 like like when 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 you when you told me that you know that you were you know part of this project I I didn't know that you actually were in it and you know you showed me some stills and I mean, I, I would think you're probably like 30 something, you know, <laughs> so oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> but that's that's awesome that how, you know, you have experience right with with the whole acting. Right. So that's one of the questions I had, too, as far as juggling that that dynamic role. Right. Acting in a project. But at the same time, you're directing it and you say you you wrote it. Correct. Right. So I, I, I wrote the script and then uh you know, obviously got into the director role, but a lot of what I've noticed is like, look, for example, Mel Gibson did Braveheart. He, but he had years of acting experience before he did that. So he pulled it off. He was able to star in it, direct it and uh, made a, a, a film that that's iconic, you know, with Braveheart. And then for, for me and the four horsemen, 
Um, I didn't want to make it a pure vanity project. I've seen those before where the guys, they write the script, they direct it and they star in it and they do everything. Yeah. And it's really hard to wear all those hats. Uh, yeah. It can be done. But um, so what I did with this script is I gave myself a fairly minor role, didn't give myself a lot of lines, but I didn't want to make it all about me. I wanted to make it about the story and the story in a short film. It's fairly simple, but um, it it when you're making a film, you have to progress that story forward and especially keeping the audience's attention. You have to do it um, very efficiently. You can't spend a lot of time on one area without progressing that story forward. Yeah, that's uh that's a good point and um I want to talk to you about as far as you know obviously you know you wrote it now obviously I see a lot of similarities and inspiration through like obviously Tombstone right that's everybody's classic film and mm-hmm. you know but when you're filming a western right as, as far as like, at least for me right when you're filming a western you get those close up shots and those kind of moments where it's like you're waiting to see what's going to happen next. And I feel like when I saw this, I got that. And it's very like, um, obviously, the, like the whole production, the set, you know, obviously brought that to life. But, um, you know, I, and I did mention the lead actor, Jacob Lee, I think his name, right? Jacob Lee? Yes, Jacob Lee. Yeah, he did an incredible job. And he re- he reminds me of uh, a little bit of, uh, he has like that Jeff Daniels kind of vibe for me. Like, and then like, he just, he just brought that, character to life and tell us a little bit about like the casting process so uh jacob was um my daughter was in a play locally here in montgomery alabama at the cloverdale playhouse and she was in the um it was the hobbit and jacob was actually playing the part of gandalf um Mm. and he was amazing and he did the accent and everything and he actually because he's a shorter of stature he uh was on stilts so he would tower above the rest of the cast that were playing hobbits and he was amazing so i just got his contact information uh and talked to him a few times about hey i want you to play this part and then as we started talking about my um main script that's going to be a full-length feature the um working title gunslinger Mm. we started talking about that so i said i want you to play my main antagonist i want you to to be um who's also named Jack in, in my main gunslinger script. And so I started teaching Jacob how to ride horses about a year ago, how to shoot guns, how to draw fast, uh, got him comfortable. So he looked natural and he was a natural at, at riding horses as well. And I put him on a really good horse for the film. Uh, the horse is named Atlas, but Jacob was a local actor and done lots of plays. This is his first film and he just wow. blew it out of the water. And as a director, I didn't have to give him a lot of direction. I just let him be himself. And he really got into the character and made it his own. Wow. So this was his first film, right? That That's, that's that, you know, sometimes, you, you know, you get, you know, like, you know, as far as myself too, right? You get some people that it's your first time, but it's kind of sometimes they have that natural instinct. And I feel like, you know. I mean, with this, I mean, wow, I wouldn't have known that. Uh, that's- he does. He, he's just a natural, and he had pure instinct. And and I, unfortunately, don't have that. I'm really stiff in front of the camera. I'm a good action guy, but when delivering lines, I I get a little nervous. And, uh, you know, it's that's why, um, like I said, as far as making this a vanity project, that wasn't going to happen. But I also wanted to kind of be in, in front of the camera a little bit, so and I can ride horses. So I concentrated on doing a lot of stunts, not talking a whole lot, but just being kind of that action guy. But I let, you know, as far as bringing Jacob in, he just carried this movie. And as a director, it was just um, a godsend to have that. Yeah. And when you're looking at, at the whole set, right? How did you, how did you guys uh, end up with, with the location? Uh, Was that something where it's, you had to get a permit or how, how did I go? Well, so we filmed in an old West town that that's a replica and it's in, in, uh, near Villarica, Alabama, or I mean, I'm sorry, Villarica, Georgia. So, um, I actually do live shows. I, I'm a jouster. Um, I had been in another Western movie two years ago that never finished being produced. It's still mm-hmm. going and I'm sure it'll come out sometime, but, uh, having done that, I met some other cowboys who do local shows and they said, Hey, um, uh, 
there's a place called Villa Rica gold mine and they do a live shootout. Uh, there's a train ride. And uh, I talked to the Cowboys that were extras on this other film I was in and they said, Hey, come out and join us sometime, you know, come out and do a live show. So I don't think they ever believed I would actually show up, but I brought my horse, I uh, came out um, dressed, you know, full gear, blanks, everything ready to go because I'm also a civil war reenactor. So I had mm. most of the equipment I needed. I uh, showed up with my horse, Henry, and um, we, we did a live, uh, we did seven live shows that day. And uh, we kind of pre-coordinated what we we're going to do, made up the, the live show on the spot and then ran through it seven times as, you know, the bad guys tried to rob the train. I came in as the local marshal and uh, we had a shootout and and uh, I got to be victorious every, every, every show, uh, you know, saving the train and killing all the bad guys. So that was a lot of fun. So to get the old West town, I had talked to one of the guys locally, um, who runs the shows. And, uh, when we came up for the idea to do a short film, uh, originally we didn't have the old West town in mind, but he said, Hey, why don't you contact the owners and see if they'll let you film there? Uh, so they did. And um, it added such gravitas to the, the whole filmmaking process. You know, those saloons, a working saloon, which you saw that in, in the film itself. Yeah. Um, and then the big shootout in the streets, um, all of that um, came together and it was kind of um, serendipity. It didn't just, it, you know, we had to make some phone calls, but as the ideas started flowing, it just started coming together. We got very lucky. Yeah, and you know, as far as the whole cast, what was the total like? As far as because uh, it it looked like it was a big, big production, and you know, obviously you have a, a DP on set. Um, how did how did getting kind of everything together and making everything click right? Because did you have a, a, a an assistant a director with you or a producer, or was it mostly you? I did. I'll run through the cast, and this is something as. You know, when we talked about initially doing this interview, I really had some themes in mind. And one of them is, as a director and a film filmmaker, you can wear a lot of the hats, but you can't wear all of them. Yeah. And the biggest part of making this film was I had the right people show up at the right time. And it happened in the... Um, during COVID, it was the last summer. So a lot of people weren't doing a whole lot. The reenactors were bored. The guys weren't doing their live shows. And a lot of filmmakers or aspiring filmmakers weren't currently working on anything. So um, it started with uh, Joey Garland, who also uh, wrote the song for, for the movie. Mm. Um, and he's in the movie industry and he does some, or uh, the film, uh, sorry, music industry. I think I said that. Yeah. Uh, but he, um, pulled in some people, uh, Clayton Bailey, who became my cinematographer, cinematographer. And then I had S Stephanie, um, Nay Miller, who came in and she ended up editing the film for me, but we worked together countless hours in editing. And I'm sure you know what that's like, yeah. uh, to sit there and edit through your footage. And originally we thought we could shoot this in one or two weekends. We ended up doing it over five weekends because every time we'd start editing, we're like, we need this scene. We got to go back and redo this. So oh, continuity yeah, that... <laughs> started to become an issue. Yes. But on set, I had everybody wore multiple hats. My main got my jousting partner and my, you know, he's like the, um, the guy that really helped support me all the time. His name's uh, Lex Farley, uh, and he plays a character in the movie as well. Uh, he's the guy that would, you know, over my shoulder, he was kind of not necessarily my assistant, but I'm like, hey, I need this horse saddled for this scene. I need this done. And he'd go get it done. So you have to have that guy that can just do everything you need and and pull everything together. I'm like, all right, I need these next four actors are in the scene. I need you to have them ready to go because, you know, actors kind of drift off and get sidetracked. And yeah. You got to pull them back in and, and um, you know, keep everybody quiet on the set. And just um, you have to always have that one guy that you can give direction and they just go follow it. So, um, but we ended up having about 20 actors, 11 horses. Uh, we filmed in some huge open fields, uh, with cows, uh, as well as the, the old West town. Yes. And, uh, like I said, I, uh, you know, a scene that comes to mind real quick and I was kind of just kind of, I wanted to ask you this too, cause I know, you know, when you're, when you're dealing with, with animals, right. It's, you can't, it's, they're not actors obviously. Right. I mean, there's, there's some that are trained, but 
I mean, there's a lot of things that go into that that people don't know behind the scenes. Like, as far as horses or, or like you said, like cows or whatever, right? So we have, there's a scene where uh, I think you're on the horse and you're chasing this old man and uh, you hit him with your rifle, I think, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Now, there was, I feel like there was like a super close call where it's like the horse almost kind of like tramples over him. But I was like, wow, that like, that, that that's like a real cool scene right there because it was very like like on spot right like i don't know how many takes you guys right. for that scene but that was awesome um, we we did that with five cameras and three takes okay um so we did and and uh i don't want to give too much away about the story yeah but that big open field we had the master camera which covered the whole area it gave the grandeur of us coming up over that hill and then we had cameras hidden behind trees we had a gopro down in the grass um and we did the first take and the outlaws that we were chasing weren't moving fast enough. So I'm like, all right, we got to redo this. And we de-scoped it from the whole outlaw posse to let's just do a single chase. You know, we had multiple chasers with a single horse, which helped us um, kind of de-scope that. So it wasn't so complicated. Yeah. Um, the biggest problem is a filmmaker and filming that with five cameras rolling, you have to get all that action perfectly because you're going to see it from all every angle yeah. and you know as a director and, and an editor you have to move all right let's move from the wide shot to the close shot and it helps break things up and you need your different camera angles uh so on the third take we got that down and we actually filmed that in two separate segments we did the master which we did through the whole thing and i don't know if you watched the film all the way through the end to the uh, bloopers at the end past the credits oh i did not see it pass i didn't see that <laughs> If I'll check so it out. that's a little a little Easter egg. So you watch some of our blooper reel at the end. So you go all the way through the credits, and then you're gonna see just raw footage. You'll see me fall off my horse once, you know, and uh, but you'll see that scene, the wide one. But what we did is we filmed the whole thing wide um, with five cameras, and then we used a single camera to do the close up of the impact of the weapon and um, and uh, you know riding the horse. Now I am a trained jouster i've got a good partner my horse partner is henry um and we used him to ride him down and i felt very comfortable you know with the stunt and getting that close and and hitting the the individual the actor uh so um you know it it pays off to uh have animals you've worked with and you know i know a lot of times in the big films they show up and they give them a horse and like okay this is your horse the other thing i wanted to capture with this film is not all the horses were perfectly trained for shooting and being Mm -hmm. around guns and i wanted that i wanted those natural reactions of horses going crazy and breaking loose and running through you know a gunfight and stuff like that so we we were able to capture a very natural thing by letting things just happen and not trying to force everything to be exactly what i wanted um and we just got the naturalness of hey you know the horses broke free and they ran through the smoke and that's perfect you know we happen to have cameras rolling and it worked out wow yeah man that, that was that was an incredible sequence there and you know as you're talking about the you know the the gunslinging portion of it let's talk about how that happened right so now I mean, I've never filmed a Western, but I, I, I'd imagine when you're, you know, when you're doing the gun scenes, they pretty much, do they have to be realistic or are, are did you at some point uh, think to yourself, hey, maybe um, should we do some visual effects? How, how is that going as far as the, 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 practi- the, the practicality of the gunslinging? So I did a lot of study before we actually filmed this and I watched a lot of independent films as well as the actual West, you know, the spaghetti Westerns that Clint Eastwood, John, you know, before Clint Eastwood did the spaghetti Westerns, you had John Wayne. Um, And in the early sixties, you know, the mid sixties, they didn't use a lot of blood. They had no, you know, uh, CGI. So not a lot of special effects. Everything had to be done on set. So in, and then I also saw some films that I studied where they, you could tell obviously that the blood shot or a, a person getting shot was CGI. And I wanted to stay away from that. So we really tried hard to make everything happen on set. There's very few 
elements of the CGI that we added in. We added some extra smoke and some scenes that looked a little too clean, which is common in, in um, even the major motion pictures. Uh, but as far as the gunslinging, we were using uh, black powder guns um, okay. as well as a lot of blanks. And it's funny because I was watching uh, an action movie and they did a slow motion of a blank being ejected out of uh, an automatic rifle. And when I saw it, they crimped the ends. There's no bullet in it. They just crimped the ends. Mm -hmm. And in this close up of this, this cartridge being ejected out of the automatic weapon, you can see the crimped ends. And I'm like, Oh, I wouldn't have known that was a blank unless I had already worked with them. So, um, but we used a lot of blanks for real smoke, real bangs. Uh, we did go through with the sound and have to amp up some of the gunshots, but the gunshots that we laid in were real, really filmed you know the, those sounds were actually captured on set and then we laid them in to make some of the shots sound sound bigger and more more robust oh wow that's incredible i, I was going to ask you that as far as the, the the audio portion of it so you had you say you had to amp up the audio on on those on those uh sounds right we had to cut them apart because we we you capture those sounds on set um but what we had to do is um some of the gunshots were shot at a distance or, or Mm -hmm. um, like my, I shoot a rifle in this movie several times and I wanted that thing to crack. Like you, you know, where you hear that. And then, and then, so I wanted that. So to create that sound, and this was a lot of fun in the editing room, we actually layered the gunshot on top of itself three times, but then made one early. So you'd get that echo effect where it was like, you know and yeah, yeah. and uh, so that was done by laying three gunshots on top of each other and then taking a fourth and bringing it in just a, a fraction of a second earlier than the rest of them so we just played with it until we got the sound we wanted yeah i, I was kind of wondering that cuz i mean from from watching it it sounded real it sounded real which it was like as far as the sound cuz i was uh, just thinking you know when you're recording it you know if you are kind of getting those close-up shots maybe it'll, it'll, it'll peak a little bit but i mean the just uh the actual the sound and then getting the the smoke you know and everything about it because i think the blood part the blood portion of it i feel like in some movies they overdo it and i feel like in this case right. i feel like you don't need to have blood all the time right now in, in this right there's some scenes the action yeah. and we did editing techniques to make things happen so quick and we actually tried to see what it would look like with cgi blood exploding and it did not um look natural so what we did is we did quick cuts and quick edits for the action like a jason Bourne movie uh in some of the parts of the gunfight you know you see a guy take a, a shot and he slammed into the wall so we we at, from an editing standpoint you know we filmed it and then we took it we made it a quick cut. We sped up the film right before impact makes it look like he slams into the wall. And then we move on to the next part, you know, either the guy riding off or, um, you know, the guy who just shot him, you know, moving to the next target. And what that creates is you don't have to have a big bloody, you don't have to show it all because you're doing it with your edits. Yeah, that's true. And we did it in the style of the old Westerns where they didn't have a lot of that as well and and a lot of it i do want to make uh with gunslinger my full length i want to keep it realistic but i do want to use the squibs and i do want um to have that but for making a movie on a budget you have to walk around these things sometimes so with you know a squib i I talked to a guy on a movie set um this was a another this was actually um a film with a budget and the squib guy who was working that one, he said it's basically about three hundred dollars a squib. So mm. you think, how many people did we? I don't want you to give it away, but you know we shot a lot of people in this movie, and, and uh, you know how many? How much would that have cost me? So yeah, I stayed away from that and just took a. You can kind of use an artistic point um, sometimes, and then use editing to cover up some of that. Now, for the audience, can you elaborate on what exactly a squib is? A squib is um, whenever you see an exploding bullet wound, uh, when it hits the body, it explodes out uh, either in the front or the back or Mm -hmm. sometimes both. And that's what a squib is. Perfect. And they actually, in the movie industry, in a high budget film, even some of the lower budgets, they actually use gunpowder to explode that out. You can also use air. You can make homemade squibs. I've, I've researched it. 
But once again, when you're dealing with film, you can't hide a lot. The, the film really shows a lot. Yeah. Um, so, and you, I'm sure you've seen modern things sometimes creep into a, a historical piece and there's just uh, hard to hide some things. Yeah. And make I, it look real. Yeah, exactly. Now, if you don't mind me asking, the budget for this film, are you going to exp- are you going to kind of duplicate it or are you going to go a little all out on the feature length film? The feature length film we're going to go all out. Okay. So we we it cost us um about $10,000 to make this film. And that's from, you know, renting the uh, golf carts to haul the equipment around, uh, getting horses on set. Now, you know, a lot of guys brought their horses and showed up as extras and, you know, we'd give them gas money and things like, like we had cost savings, but Mm -hmm. we did this non-union. So we didn't have to worry about a lot. This was kind of a side project for a lot of guys. A lot of guys just wanted to be in a movie. And when you're doing independent films, Mm -hmm. a lot of people hey they just want to be in a movie so if you can uh, do a sales pitch and get them in it <laughs> they're gonna <laughs> give you everything they've got to be just be on film so um that's what a lot of our guys in this weren't real actors and we had to coach them into they had done some live shows and things but yeah. what i'd noticed is dealing with actors is a lot of them went over the top and like whoa we got to bring this down so as a director <laughs> you got to coach them in to exactly. something realistic you know and i know some of the guys we were taking 14 15 takes on one line just to get it natural but you had to actually just kind of keep bringing them down bringing them down because Um, as live performers, they all wanted to yell their lines. So we had to kind of bring it down to a a talkative tone. Now, at some point when when you're directing, especially, you know, when you, it's a bigger cast, do you kind of maybe like, let's say the takes are not exactly what you want. Do you revisit those takes or do you have to get that take at that one, like that time? So I initially was like, all right, we have limited time. Let's get it in the can and move on. Let's do it, move on. And after I saw what we could accomplish with this, uh, we actually went back for multiple, or we did the first part of the, we, we filmed the whole thing in one weekend, the, the start of it. And then I'm like, man, I need more here. I need to add this scene. The story's not clear. Um, and then I don't like how this line came out or this action. Let's go back and redo it. So we, we went back a second weekend and then a third weekend and then a fourth weekend and then a fifth weekend. So initially I thought, all right, I can live with it. But then I realized I really couldn't. So I kept going back to get things better and do it right. Um, and I know oftentimes you'll watch a film and you're like, well, that that actor especially the independent, sometimes it doesn't feel natural. And what we had to do is really get people, get these guys to relax and just give me a natural line delivery. And as a director, you have to coach them there a little bit and um, kind of push for that. Yeah. I feel like after, after what is, uh, there's a saying, right? After the first take, it's acting. Cause after, after the, the couple takes, it's like, all right, at that point, you're not really like, it's you're acting, acting, you know what I mean? Like the, right. the, the first take is going to be the, the the natural or you're trying to get that at least out of them. Well, and that's like as Jacob, who um, played uh, Outlaw Jack, he's just a natural. And sometimes he went over the top, but it worked. You know, there was a couple line deliveries that I typically wouldn't have wanted as a natural course of, of but it was like that character coming to life. And sometimes to catch it on camera, you got to go a little over the top. So, but a lot of Jacob's stuff was a lot of some of the lines. And I, as the writer, I hate to admit it, but he would come up with a line on set and just deliver it in front of the camera. And we're like, that's it. (laughs) We're done. You know, because (laughs) he would add something in and I'm like, I didn't write that, but we're going with it, you know? And, and that's the genius of having, uh, somebody who's just a natural on set. Uh, Robin Williams used to do, you know, ad lib all the time. And Jacob did quite a bit of that. So we just let him roll with it. Hey, are you a photographer, designer, artist, architect, model, musician, or even a makeup artist? You got to check out Portfolio Box. With Portfolio Box, you're not forced to use any standard theme. You can use any style for any page and create a truly unique website that reflects you and your work. If you're a creative, it's a no-brainer. Get 50% off for 12 months on all plans with promo code ROD50. That's promo code ROD50. 
and check out PortfolioBox.net today. You know, how much leeway do you give your actors, right? Your, you know, your main actors are going to, usually I give my main actors a little more kind of wiggle room where they could start, you know, doing kind of, you know, if they have any ideas, I give them that room. But, you know, sometimes like, you know, the, the script has to be a little strict, but, you know, what, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, as far as telling the story, that's what it's about. And sometimes, you know, you have a vision of what you want, but you can't always be so tied into that vision that you can't let the actor kind of explore the space a little bit. Um, And with Jacob, I told him, look, if you're going to go off script, I don't want to hear it in advance. If it comes out naturally, make it happen, you know, and we'll go with it. Uh, There's other times where guys would go off script and it wasn't working. So I'm like, all right, you need to come back, you you know, you draw them in. Mm -hmm. So really you have to, it's almost kind of going with your gut instinct on what's working and what's not working. Nice. Now for the feature length film, are are you going to explore different locations or are you still going to be in that location in Georgia? Well, originally I was going to keep it small. Um, but after this one, what I'd really like to do, so there's a Civil War element to um, to Gunslinger. And the first 15, 20 minutes of the full-length feature is going to be a Civil War battles um, and, and dialogue within around the Civil War. And then the script jumps eight years later into the Old West. So what I'd like to do is film the Civil War piece uh, here in Alabama, Georgia area, and then for the main part of the film, which will be the, the out west, I want a total change of scenery. And you can tell this one um, for Four Horsemen, it's kind of like it could be Wyoming. It could be Arkansas. You know, you really yeah. it's anywhere USA, but it's green. It's very green because we're in Georgia. Yeah. Uh, so with um, the next one, I want it truly wild west so i want to do this whole change of pace where it's all green it's civil war battles in this old south and then you go out west and i want it desert old west dusty towns so i've been already looking in arizona texas trying to find an old west town where i can film but with um the the budget that we're working on and trying to uh you know use four horsemen to bolster a gunslinger um we hope that we can do film the uh civil war piece here in the south and then go out west and film the rest of the movie wow that's exciting you know you know when you're always looking for a location that's kind of that's when your mind just starts wandering to like you know what else could i do and i I, that's that's the time where i I enjoy the most sometimes you know when i loved your um with your film uh deadline when when you had had the old you had the, the, the desert and I'm like, Oh, I want to film my Western in your desert. So I, we got to talk. <laughs> I want to see where you film part of that. <laughs> well, so that was really good. Well, I'm based here in SoCal. So, you know, we got everything, you know, we got from like mountains to the desert, to the city. Now that, that was here up in uh, North LA. That location is called Vasquez rocks. Um, mm-hmm. And around there, there, there is actually old barns and like little areas where, um, it's kind of, it look, kind of looks like you're out in the, you know, in, in the wild, wild west, but you know, I feel like, you know, in Arizona, uh, especially Texas, you know, you have those, those lots ready, you know, it just depends on, on the budget, you know? Right. It, it does. And it's also, you know, you can find a ready-made, you know, I don't have to build one from scratch. You can find ready-made old West towns and you can rent them. And, you know, and I figure the other thing on this film and this go, kind of, goes out to your other uh, filmmakers, um, continuity became a real hassle when I did it over weekends. I'd do a weekend, then we'd have a you know a month off and then come back for another weekend and try to coordinate. And lucky for me, I was able to get all my actors and most of the crew back for every weekend, you know, over five different weekends. Um, what I really want to do with my next one is let's, let's take two weeks and film the whole thing at once so we don't have to worry about those continuity issues. No, that's a hundred percent agree with you on that. Now, did you shoot the whole thing? Sorry if you if you have to repeat myself here, but did did you shoot um, the whole those five weeks? It wasn't last year, was it? Yeah, it was five weekends. Uh, I started, I think, in July time frame of twenty twenty. Oh, okay. And and then we we went. You know, we we're coming into you know, and the weather actually got better because we were 
I mean, you think uh, Georgia in July, um, and we're wearing all the old West clothes, the oh. coats and everything. We were just, the sweat you see is real sweat. <laughs> yeah, know, that, so. that's another thing I was going to ask you too. Like, because, you know, coming from, you know, watching those Westerns, right? Uh, one of those also key aspects is, uh, especially in Tombstone, you see that, I forgot the name of the actor, but, you know, you see the the the, the sweat, you know, like that's that's just like, okay, that's a Western, you know? Yeah, and those Westerns, they got that single bead of sweat that rolls down their face right before the gun gun shooting starts. Mm, yeah. So, um, you know, and we, we naturally had that. <laughs> so, uh, and then it got cooler. When we did the big scene in the field with all the cows and the big open, um, we actually had a nice cool day and the horses felt good. We put a lot of miles on the horses that day to, to get all the travel pieces done. And uh, we, we lucked out filming into the the fall where the weather cooled down for us perfect and you know when, when you're when you're doing these 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 films and you know like did you already have a mind or like already have an idea all right you know we're shooting you know you guys started shooting in july now was was the pandemic ever some some sort of like uh because for me my originally deadline wasn't wasn't going to be an action film you know but once once the you know this restrictions and location started you know saying no and you know i had to switch up the cast a little bit uh was there any issues regarding like any like oh you're banning or any you know like sorry well, well i'll tell you um you know covid almost helped me with this because the guys that i needed for the film weren't doing any other jobs yeah um the old West town was completely empty because nobody was coming for the shows and they weren't hosting any, anything. So they were really happy to open up to us and let us come there and film because they needed the, the money. Yeah. Uh, or at least, you know, they, they needed something. So, and then the guys were Jones in, and I didn't do this right. You know, we let COVID play out. It started in March of, of 2020. And here we are in July and we're still sitting here on our hands. Like, what are we going to do? You yeah. know, my, I've, I've got all these ideas. I need to go make something. So that's when we started. And we kept, you know, overall, we kept the cast small and we took precautions where we could. And uh, most of the guys weren't too worried about it as far as getting together. And we just kept an eye on things. And because I was non-union or whatnot, we, we just were able to, to bend some rules and make it happen. Nice, nice. Now, you know, reverting back a little bit to the film festival, um, you know, was was that your plan all along? Or and, and and I know you did mention you're still kind of gonna run 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 its course. What what's your plan going forward? Uh, and you know, and for the audience, if they do want to watch it, wh uh, where can they watch it? If 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 you know, once you go through that film pro uh, film festival process. So originally, this film was probably ever, never going to be seen by anybody but a couple of guys and, you know, the ones who were in it. And uh, uh, it was just a proof of concept for myself to get my director chops, my producing chops and kind of, um, you know, figure things out because uh, this was my first real film that I worked on. Uh, it came out to be about 27 minutes long after, you know, we, we realized we kind of had lightning in a bottle with the team that showed up. I'm like, wow, this is going to be, we could make this really good. So we kept going back till we got what we wanted. Uh, so then from there, we're like, you know, what are we going to do with this thing? So we started with film festivals, um, the Paris festival where, and I'm very lucky to have been able to meet you through that, uh, was, um, with the first one, our first nomination, and it was in the action genre uh, and uh, action short, and we were very lucky to be nominated for that. And it kind of like so, Film Freeway makes it very easy to submit. Yeah, we're like all right, maybe we've got something here. So we we started looking at other festivals, and now from the time that you and I talked to to now, which has only been about a week, uh, I've decided that um, what we're going to do is we're going to run the film festival gambit through July, August, which is almost about one year since we started filming. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and um, we're looking to get on Amazon Prime. Uh, just, um, you know, and they, you know, I've learned some stuff from talking to you. And that's the thing. It's about networking in this business. So um, I'm so glad I reached out to you. And, um, you know, like I said, 
deadline, well-deserved uh, win there uh, for action genre. That was, um, I really enjoyed that. And I'm also a martial artist uh, oh, wow. with, with three different black belts. So it was really cool to watch your film. And I'm like, man, I want to be in, in the next one. Let me come out <laughs> and punch some guys. <laughs> I can't kick, I can't kick as high as I used to, but I, so. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, man. You know what? We're going to need, we're going to need a stunt coordinator for the next one, man. So we're going to, we're going to have to get you on board. <laughs> Well, I'm a sword fighter and I uh, also do, you know, Eastern and Western martial arts. And, uh, you know, I've always thought if the acting thing doesn't work out, I could be a stunt man. But now my, my, my body's getting a too, little bit too old to do that. So awesome. Awesome. But you know what, you know, with, you know, with distribution, you know, um, I, like you said, right, it's about networking and I didn't, obviously, you know, we, we, we hear about these streaming platforms, and you know, Amazon Prime was something that was brought to my attention from do, for during one of these podcasts, and it was a documentary filmmaker, and she had a her documentary, you know, on Amazon Prime, and that's where you know, the, the you know the bell started moving, and that's like, okay, you know, why why not give it a shot? And you know, it ended up being on, on Amazon Prime, and there's other platforms as well, but Amazon Prime is fairly for me it's fairly easy to submit now you know obviously there's other little components but you know once you got it on there you know you're 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 pretty much being distributed you know you right. got you got all over the world you know as far as and, it, <clears throat> and it's almost self distribution you know i always thought i had to like earn the distribution or get it both through amazon prime once you make the wickets and, and you, you go to all their technical criteria, uh, closed captioning and things like that, and then you submit, there's a two-week process where you get approved and somebody puts real eyes on it and approves it. Um, but as far as independent filmmakers, you can't beat that. I was really surprised at um, the, the ability for in, independent filmmakers to actually get their own distribution. Now, you're not going to get rich doing it. Um, yeah. as you probably know, you know, what it takes to, to earn money that way, but you can get your film out there and that's, that's the key because if you're going to make something, you don't want it to sit on the shelf. If you're really proud of what you made, you want people to see it. Exactly. Exactly. You know, I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, what else you get. I'm just ex as excited just to see what Gunslinger, you know, will, will come out to be. Thank you. Yeah. And I just, um, I'm excited as well to see what else we can accomplish. And we were on very minimal budget and were able to accomplish so much, um, you know, and it took a lot of long hours and a lot of hard work, but I know we're coming up on the end of our 40 minutes here, but one, one thought that I had as we we're coming into this podcast, and I know you say that this is for those um, aspiring filmmakers, other directors, other people who want to be in the film industry. I'll tell you, I had so much negative, negativity going into making this movie without any formal training. Um, I did get lucky and I had a, people that had the skill sets, uh, brought the camera equipment and uh, really made this thing happen. But I'll tell you, you know, if you have a vision and have a dream, you just keep pushing at it and, and keep going and, and you'll get there. So that's, that's my advice to, you know, I never thought I would uh, be sitting here talking to you today. Uh, let alone having a film and film festivals so with potential um, Amazon Prime distribution. So it's, you know, follow your dreams. Well said, Jason. And that's exactly what, you know, you know, that's the enjoy the process. Right. And, you know, obviously everyone comes from different areas, different demographics, but we all have a vision. We all we're all uniquely, you know, have our own dreams and you can't you can't be afraid and you always got to trust your gut instinct and you know i think uh you said it well right there and just just glad that we were able to kind of network and you know i think maybe you know this will kind of help everyone not just us well you nailed it when you said uh that um you basically have fun with it i mean if you're going to go through this process enjoy every minute of it because it is a lot of fun yeah, I think that's that's what it is, right? You know, being being perfect, it, I don't think is it's a destination, right? It's 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 the it's the process, you know. So exactly. Well, Jason, thanks for coming on, and you know, I can't wait to see what else you got in store, and you know, where can they find you as far as social media or, you know, a, a website? 
So we have Instagram uh, and we have Facebook. Just search for The Four Horsemen. Uh, that's the, the title of the movie or The Four Horsemen Western. So uh, do that search on Facebook or Instagram and you'll find us. Perfect, perfect. And with that, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and we'll make sure to have Jason Ryan on the next one and maybe we'll, we'll be talking Gunslinger. <laughs> That'd be excellent. Thank you. All right, Jason, have a good one. Stay safe. All right, you too. And don't forget to subscribe. And check out the latest episodes on the website. Follow us on social media at Hardwood Rod. And don't forget, every Tuesday we got the latest and greatest. So stay locked in. Would you like to be on the podcast? Got something to talk about? Make sure you head over to the website, hardwoodrod.com. Leave your name and the topic you'd like to discuss. And I'll add you to the calendar.